Hello and welcome to another episode from Talks to Couch to Calculator. I am Francesca, your accountant, and Jordan is your therapist. And we are bringing in some really good conversations. If you have any questions along the way, please fire them over and we'll be happy to answer them. Sit back, relax and enjoy and laugh along with us. God, we're doing episode two. I know. And I can't believe we're in September. I know, and it feels oh. like October. It does. We've Is just been moaning about the weather. Yeah, I know. About weather. So it's 25 degrees tomorrow. Today it's currently 15 ish, isn't it's it? It's not on, yeah. Um, it's the inconsistency for me. It's not acceptable, is it? No. You need to know where you're at. You need to know what, what you can wear. <laughs> I've curated my wardrobe so that, like, there's not too much in it. Yeah. And I've got stuff out at the minute that's, like, summer, probably, like, a little bit autumn friendly, but I need to cycle some bits in and out. I, I literally wear the same sh shit day in, day out yeah. to stop my brain thinking. I do. And it's always leggings. Like, yeah. Yeah, leggings and a jumper or a top or... Something like that, but then every now and again I have a little internal meltdown, and I think I look a scruff. Oh, yeah, I'm a scruff all the time. I'm not yeah. stylish. Or you have yeah. a scroll of LinkedIn, and you think, oh my god. Yeah, everyone else. <laughs> Especially so... when you're a mum as well, and you think, wow, that's it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, though, back in when I was at Duncan and Topless, I got called glamorous, right? And mm. in my head, I wasn't, but I obviously yeah. looked the part because I did used to make a lot of effort. Yeah. Yeah. My makeup was always on, my hair was always done. Yeah. I usually wear heels, it's only like towards the end of leaving that I thought, oh, I'm going to wear flats, why am I I'm doing it for comfort now? Yeah, yeah. But the previous role I was in, in industry, they all women were glamorous. I know. So it's I that, felt the pressure. Like old corporate vibe, isn't mm. it? And um, have you heard of the term like pretty privilege? No. Well, it is a real thing. Is it? Yeah, and I think it is still a bit rife maybe not so much, but in like <clears throat> the corporate world and probably like just the world generally. I think I know what you're getting at, Well, obviously. it is what it says on the tin. Do you know what I mean? That like, you're seen more favourable if you're more attractive and if you like dress well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean actually. You look a certain way. And yes. it makes sense in the work world because <clears throat> it's still true mm -hmm. Most of the time that people tend to be favoured if they look a certain way, don't yeah. they? You know, if their bodies are a certain shape, if they wear certain clothes. Do you, do you know what I mean? I do know or, exactly or what you mean. Or if you're just naturally pretty as well, yeah. you are seen to be able to pull off things like maybe a more casual oh look God. that like people in like bigger bodies wouldn't necessarily be able to. Do you know what I mean? Hundred mm -hmm. million percent. I also do believe that it's how you carry yourself, whether yeah. or how you look, that yeah. will help. But mm -hmm. Yeah, looking back, it's definitely the pretty girls that... Yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you feel that, don't you? Because I bet, obviously, you can't go back in time, but you might remember that when you decided to wear flats for the first time, I bet you were, like, there was a thought process. Oh, quite, like, felt thinking, like a right. People From... are really going to notice, you know, what yeah. if people think I look weird or... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. over, like, your shoe choice. There will have I been did. that thought process, wouldn't there? Yeah, definitely. And I remember yeah. being like, I can eat Tosh and I my heels. Oh. What was no, I thinking? Honestly. And then it sets a trend that others yeah. would follow. Like, oh, she thinks it's all right, yeah. actually, yeah. Because if you think about... It was, like, a bit pre-COVID, wasn't it? But, like, yep. during COVID, that's when, like, leisure wear really came The makeup came off. Yeah, and it because everyone was doing it, everyone felt they could do it. It became fashionable. Yeah. But it does only take, like, one person in the office but I feel like it does have to be a person of influence. Again, who is yeah of influence because and I'm a strong character. Yeah, so to go oh they're doing it. Do you know yeah. what? Yeah, and then someone might say to you, might they? Oh, I like your flats. Do you know what? I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Yeah. Fuck these it's so interesting because I know, the psychology. Of yeah. People workplaces and stuff. I remember creating con videos on LinkedIn with no. I did it with no makeup on, mm. and the first time I did it. I hated looking at myself without makeup. I hate watching my videos back. It's really interesting how I thought of myself. But actually, when you get validation, and that's really bad, because I like a bit of validation on mm -hmm. social media. I may as well admit it, because that's what we're all there for. Yeah, anyway. absolutely. Um, and someone said, oh my God, you don't need makeup, or your skin looks great. I've got more confident. Yeah. But actually, I was confident already within, was I wouldn't have done a video without makeup. Yeah. I actually looked in the mirror one day and thought, you are who you are. Yes. And it's meeting yeah. my lifelong partner. 
Yeah. That, I'm, that also gave me that confidence. Yeah, that's that security not, and confidence. Yeah. Like not you're on the way out and they go, oh, you're going out like that. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Or not being single yeah. and sharing yourself on social media. Yes. That's a different ball game. It's it, really it does, hard. It does give you a different air of something. Absolutely, yeah. Because you're much more worried about how you're going to be perceived mm. and whether you're going to be seen as like, not necessarily, well, attractive. Asking for it. <laughs> yeah, but also like... You know, if, if you're on social media, saying certain things, doing certain things, being yourself, I think often people worry, like, am I not coming across in the right way? Will people not like me and therefore am I not going to find someone? Yeah. But that's the biggest mistake in, I think, like, in, like, social media, dating profiles and dating. Yeah. People are too busy thinking about what they think the other person wants from them yeah to just be themselves and be accepted and i always say this to like i've said it to friends to clients i've had to coach myself through it at yeah. times it's just been really hard but if you if you show up as yourself yeah and someone likes you then you get into a relationship you're gonna have a quite a secure relationship there because you'll be confident yeah. they like you who you are if you kind of you know always turned up looking pristine. a certain way, pristine, yeah. you know, perhaps like pretending you like similar things to them mm -hmm. and you get into a relationship, yeah. there's a risk that like you're always going to believe that their kind of love or feelings are conditional on you always being like that. So there could mm. be a fear of then being yourself is going to get you rejected. Yeah. And then it's either, either you might ease into it and get more comfortable, that's not the case, but I think for many people... There's then a fear like, well, I have to keep up appearances. Not necessarily physical appearance, it could be that, but also like certain personality traits or else I'll be rejected or else I'll Yeah, they won't like me anymore. Yeah. They'll find me out. Yeah, and then obviously your relationship is not secure. It's not healthy, it's not It's not, it's not real and it's probably not going to last or... Probably not, no. Or do they last because people are scared to leave? That is obviously very common. So another, uh, me and John talk about this, but I, I always say your personal life will affect your business life. 100%. And if your personal life is like that, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bit fake and a bit not right. Yeah. It's never going to give you the confidence to pursue no. your business goals. No. And women out there hold themselves back and you yeah. just need to look internally yeah. and be real with yourself and yeah. that's what I did and it's the hardest yeah. thing I did. I was going to say it is really really hard mm. um, there's there's so much fear around leaving a long term relationship isn't oh, there? Oh my god it's a scary thing. It is really scary like you know especially if you've got children yeah. or you've been together like a significant amount of time and from a young age as well yeah you know kind of like life as you know it will change forever and even if it's for the better yeah there's that fear of the unknown isn't there yeah and uncertainty. a lot of people always think it will be worse yeah because we all go to that safe negative space it's a catastrophe yeah, yeah. Isn't it? catastrophe. What, if, yeah. <laughs> what if this what if that and then like you know, maybe immediately it's really hard, like it is, isn't it? You've got that like transitional piece, but then even like sometimes a couple of months, six months, a year down the line, you look back and you're like, oh, I should have done that so much sooner. Oh my God, I'm so much better off. I know. What about the people, now? I know women that are in the 40s, or you mm. hear stories about other people stuck. Yeah. yeah. Or they got they don't know what to do with their careers. And, yeah. But yeah. there's still time. There is still time. There's so many like variables, aren't there? And for everyone it's different, but there are still some women who are financially dependent on the household income. You know, people might have jobs, mm. but there are still a lot of women out there who do the lion's share of, you know, the childcare and therefore might have, you know, lower income jobs and feel like, especially like in today's climate, kind of fucking hell, it's an absolute shit show, isn't it? I know how it is. Would think, oh, I can't house my children yeah. if I leave. Like, imagine having that pressure. I know. Like, it's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, well, what I've been watching this week, I don't know if you've watched it, and anyone else listening, if you've watched it, let us know, but it's called Rich House, Poor House. Do you know what? It's I've cringe. not watched it recently, but I used to watch every episode. I used Did to you? love it. Yeah. I love it, because I love, I, I love yeah. real, obviously yeah. it's going to be a little bit fake, yeah. it's a TV show. Oh, but I love it. 
the contrast. The contrast. I'm but I love, and I don't know if it's about you, and this Whoa. is why I watch like YouTube and certain things <laughs> social media. I the rich this. house, I love learning what yeah. they've done, yeah, I how do. they've earned their yeah. millions, yeah. where have you come from? And you know what? And this is, I know this is really cr cringy, right? I can't even believe I'm saying this. I've never gone that show, by the way, because I've just found that really show offy for the rich people. But yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not trying not to judge because yeah, that yeah. means Steve. We were like, what would we have left over? And all this at the yeah. other end. And Cole, his son, asked us, do you reckon you could be on this side, the other side of it? And we're oh. like, well, actually, our house isn't that far off. Well, some yeah. of them are smaller than ours. And also, like, comparably as well, like, you would be the rich house. Yeah. Like, you know, because... But I was a poor house. Yeah. Seven, eight years ago before. Yes. Prior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's this amazing. Is, this is like... You'd be, like, the ideal person for that sort of thing. Not... You know, I know it's not really advised yeah. to kind of fast. It's all advice for the mentoring. I can help people look at things differently. And I do yeah. sit there and think, I could never go on it though, because I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah. But actually, I like that concept that they help the poor yeah. as such. Yeah. And I used to, I said to Steve, when I used to count what I had left over, mm -hmm. I think it was like £100 a week. But that's yeah. only because I got child maintenance and loads don't. If I didn't have that extra bit, top yeah. up, I'd have been left with about 50 Yeah. And that's yeah. what some of them are left with. Yeah, and do you know what, like... Cringe as it sounds, saying that out loud. No, it's not cringe, it's just reality, isn't it? And, mm. like, a lot of people are still in that situation right yeah. now. And, unfortunately, you've got, like, two-parent working households yeah. that are in that same situation yeah. because of, like, the cost of living, living crisis and stuff. Like, you know, me and George have got good jobs, but we're not in a situation where we don't have to like count money and like budget for different things do you yeah. know what I mean? especially after maternity leave yeah. like that's massive hit oh like, god it, oh god it's hard that is yeah. i'm glad i'm done with all that i forget that you're <laughs> fresh to it aren't you i'm literally yeah, as a self-employed business yeah. owner as well as yeah. any other women and then obviously like sometimes you don't realize when you're in it do you and then someone will go oh my god like, i can't believe you're doing that, like, and you've got a five and a half month old and this and that. And I used to think that about people with small children, like when I was at uni and stuff, I used yeah. to think, how are you at uni doing this? Like, yeah. that's crazy. Like, I'm finding it hard as a... Especially when it's thrown at you, like, yeah. it's not planned. Yeah, yeah. Sort of exit out of your business sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, but obviously, like, George is leaving his employed role at the end of next month <laughs> to launch his this. business. Oh, we'll have to talk more And I'm just that. back from maternity, have not, can't ever at the moment for the foreseeable I cannot return to the sort of salary in the way I used to I don't yeah. have the capacity yeah. I used you're to. used to a lot of hours don't you just, yeah, yeah. Um, or just like full time hours yeah. you know what I mean I don't have that capacity now um, but we still feel that that is the best decision for our family for yeah. our life for him yeah. to leave his job and start up his own venture yeah and it is and like we launched it on social media that's right yeah. Yeah, it. the response to that has proved that to be the case you know what so it far. is it's because he is popular and the family are quite out there aren't they that yeah supportive which is great yeah. time does a lot of posts for yeah. him as well and her yeah. business is successful yeah. i think that's uh, uh, and he's got the cousin that does the podcast yeah yeah um yeah, I think he's going to do well. It's it won't well. just be limited to Newark. No, but not it's, only that, yeah, like, I feel like he's grown a really good following off his own reputation at mm. the pub, at his yeah. job. Yeah, that's good. Um, so he's a chef in the background. I know. <laughs> yeah, people, like, come for his food. And, like, he's had messages from customers that yeah. follow him saying, like, can you do a pop-up at the village hall here? So he's got where we're going to be. He's got... He's already got three bookings. Oh wow! After launching it last week. What on so Instagram? Instagram. What's it called on Instagram? George's cooking. <laughs> they followed everyone for all you what catering me. What's it called? What's the strap line? The looking. Oh. Um. Oh. Um, hey, good looking. No, it's not hey, good looking. No, it is. Oh, it is. No, it's not. That's not the strap line. But on the trailer. Yeah, it says what. Uh, it says on the back of it. Obviously, it's been towed. Hey, good looking. You're following George's cooking. That's so it. then there's a QR code. Yeah, and that's the back of it's good. Yeah. And then if anyone follows it at some point, hopefully they'll take a picture of it. Yeah, and exactly. And tag. yeah, following stuff. You need so. to get people to. Say, you need to get him to say that. That's all yeah. it is in marketing, social media. You need to give somebody excitement, like if they yeah. spot the van, oh, you tag me. Yeah. And then yeah. popular. They like people that's positive, popular, yeah. and shouting about themselves. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so that's given a bit of confidence because obviously Natalie is a bit worried. Oh, like, God, oh, yeah. Is it going to be slow and stuff? And like maybe it will be at, at some point, but 
So what three bookings has he got? Um, so there is... Twenty first of November, he's starting at um, the car auctions in Newark, mm. um, and I think that'll be like a weekly pitch, so that'd be good. So a weekly pitch and stays there for what in the day? Or I, I don't know one hundred percent, but I think the lady said you can you can come anywhere after nine, mm. and then like people start coming in at like eleven. Yeah, nice. So yeah, and then the second thing is a fundraiser in yeah. December at Farndon. Cool. Um, so he'll be it's there. Far, is, no, exactly. And then the third one is um, a wedding in 2026. <laughs> no way! Yeah. That's so far ahead. Oh, it's not going to happen from now. But that's what happens that's at weddings. Brilliant. Yeah, of course it, it like, is. So it's good because I feel like, you know, we can do a mix of things. For some yeah. security, like some, you know, bookings far in advance, and you know, kind of what you can share that. Like. I've already got bookings twenty twenty six. Get in. Yeah, yeah. That is brilliant. I know. I can't believe that. Is it going to be a big wedding? Do you think? Um, no, I think it's quite a small, like low key one. Yeah. Obviously, the trailer is quite small, but like George was saying, who knows what things will look like in two years? Yeah, you might have a massive thing going on. You never on. know. Yeah. Um, That's exciting, isn't it? Time flying. Yeah, and he's hoping to do a pop up at Coddington. Community hall um, within the next month because they've yep. said they can go anytime, just needs to give a couple of days notice. So, so yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. So you'll have to come along. Yeah, I definitely will. To will. try things. I definitely will. Yeah. If he's doing them shish kebabs, I will. Yeah, the girass, yeah. Yeah. So, what have you been up to last week when we spoke then? What have I been Anything doing? Anything new to report? I can't even remember. You didn't go live on your Monday. No, what I happened? didn't. I just. Oh, because imagine me, I was sweating. I was I like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought of you, I thought... Oh, I fancy this. I know, I thought, oh, I'm going to do it. Right, just to give some context around this, Jordan's always laughing at me because I, what I say and what I do, I have to do it. I'll do it mm. ill, probably not feeling so great because what I... Oh, yeah. But what I get from it, though, because I've many times I've had a LinkedIn Live to do. Yeah. I've been poorly, I've been... Ugh, ugh. Mm. I can't... But that's a bit different because my, that's been flowing for a bit longer and then yeah, yours yeah. is still quite warm yeah. and fresh. yeah. I always I have to stick to it, but I always feel better afterwards. Sometimes yeah, yeah. you know, and things seem to vanish. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I get why as well. If you're not well, you've got to think put yourselves first. Yeah, I feel like it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Like, mm. like there might be some occasions where I would have just soldiered on and done it. Um, what What made you not this time? Do you think? I just didn't have the energy. Like. Yeah completely off vibe like i'd been in like a rubbish mood all day do you know what i mean what like, if you came on the live and said it like that i'm actually on this live but i'm coming off in five minutes i think uh, and yeah. then once you get going someone might say don't leave us yeah. oh no one's on there yeah yeah and they yeah. use that excuse but i think try yeah. that next time just yeah, to absolutely. give me feedback on this because i know i i'm a nut i know i'm a bit of a nutter and i'll mm -hmm. do things but if if it was me coaching somebody yeah and they said that i would be saying as a positive why don't you try it yeah i completely understand where you're coming from and i agree with sharing like all the, the highs and lows yeah um like in business and behind the scenes so it wasn't about avoiding that no in any way, exactly form. one of the things that's really important to me is like modeling um like modeling that it's okay yeah to say actually you know, oh, I'm not I feeling great. Like, I want to do that for clients. I really want to do that for Hallie, my yeah. daughter. Yeah. Yeah, and just, like, shake things up a bit. Like, yeah. a lot of the people I follow in business, like, I follow some people that are, like, absolute go-getters. Like, obviously, you. Yeah. Like, oh. you're one of my, you know, inspirations. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Um, so I follow people that have that kind of approach. Yeah. And I love bits of that. And, and that would be more of the approach I would have taken yeah. in years gone by. Yeah. But what I am really trying to move towards now is I'm following a lot of people who like to make the business work for them. Yeah. Um, for various different reasons, whether it's because they've got a young family and it's important for them to be like present, mm. you know, as much as they can in the early years. Like, obviously it's not possible for everyone, but if that's, you know, a like value and goal of yours, which it is in mine, um, and also, like, I follow a couple of business owners who do have, like, chronic health conditions, but they still manage to run successful businesses. They just have to make their schedule and their business model work for them. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really interested by that and, like, moving away from 
the more kind of like traditional like hustle culture yeah type values do you know what i mean because yeah. i like it's all the cliches you said this last week all the cliches apply but rest is so productive and that mm. might look different for everyone and that's fine yeah, but i just think I'll, it's important yeah. to model like actually sometimes i am not gonna fulfill what i said i would because I don't feel well or because, you know, my daughter might not be well and yeah. so I, I won't be able to, yeah. you know, have the meeting or see my clients that day because mm. I can't send her to a family member. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, I'd never feel like this hard. I know, it? but I, and, and don't get me wrong, like the anxiety that comes up when I feel I might need to do that. Oh, did you feel that then? Was you a bit in t- turmoil? <laughs> not so much about that, to no. be honest it's with not you. The, it's not the biggest thing, is it? If I had to cancel a client day, especially Especially at the moment where like it's early days with my clients yep. and picking back up, yep. I would feel like unreliable as a mm. professional, like you know, like like people would have a negative view of me. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't stop me from doing it because it's more important that I'm like the value that's more a priority to me is being there for my daughter. Yeah. Like first and foremost. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. So if other things need to go on the back burner, if I'm going to lose money, yeah. like, so be it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I've got written into my contract as well, and that, like, my private paying clients is, like, I'm a mum of a young yeah, well, that's good child. Be there, so maybe, there yeah. may be days where, yeah. you know, I have to cancel last minute because of illness. And yeah. a lot of people, I see your parents themselves, so they get it. Some people might not, and some people might think you're not for me, and that mm. is absolutely fine, but there's, that's where transparency is really important. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then obviously when she, oh, she goes to school, it needs to be in my contract that I'll be taking like some more extended periods of leave during holidays. Cause yeah. I'm not, I don't want to put her in. I know, and I've got to remember that she's six months old. She's you know, tiny. Yeah, and I can't still. believe it. Like, I, I, know. I can't believe I'm like back in work. Doing a podcast. Um, doing things. I know George's days off on a Thursday, so it works well in his support there. Yeah, but it's still mentally. The village that makes it possible. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's so true. Yeah. But I, yeah, I do think, because like if I followed someone and they, and I was watching their lives, yours is very young though, so it's not a good comparison to be fair, but if they mm-hmm. weren't going live and they've been doing it for four, five, six months or whatever. Yeah. It is very rare. I reckon we watch people that like pretend on the outside yeah. to, to the show must go on. That's how I've been, t- yes. I don't even know if I've been taught it, but I must have been taught it. It would have been conditioning to you being in the accountant world. It's very traditional type of, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, and I'm a big know. believer in the show must go on and, that, and that, sometimes that's my downfall. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's the making of you. Yeah, yes. I and don't want to go on a tangent because obviously we're in the middle of talking about something else, but this is like... What are we talking about? Isn't it? I can't remember. <laughs> You're talking about how little... Subjects. She is, but I was just going to say, yeah. um, I've completely forgotten. No, look at us, <laughs> honestly, ju- oh my jump God. from subject to subject <laughs> yeah. all the time, I get overexcited and overstimulated yeah. and then I need to get up for now. Oh God. What's she saying? I said she's only six months you old. You said about like you're a big believer in the show must go on, you don't yeah, know definitely. where that necessarily came from. Sometimes it's yes. a downfall, but sometimes it's obviously the main of you. The one thing I wanted to say was this can be the problem with belief systems that can be unhelpful at times is that... You know, like high standards of perfectionism. Yeah, I have got high standards. <laughs> you have, and a lot of people have, but, but not perfectionism. I think. Yeah, it can dip into like a clinical issue, but the problem there lies in that because it makes you successful in some ways, or we attribute our success to those mm. traits a lot mm. of the time, and they can certainly help. Then there's a fear in dropping them, like or yeah. not even dropping them, but just flexing mm. with them. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, well, if I drop my standards even like 5%, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be able to achieve my goals, I'm yeah. not going to be able to be successful. And like a lot of the work that I do with people with high achievers is, you are a high achiever, yeah. like just by nature, you know, like it's how you are, it's how your brain works. If you were to drop like even 20% of, of the effort that you put in, objectively people won't notice and the outcomes are probably going to remain stable True. because of your ability and experience. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like some of the experiments we're doing therapy is about that, trying yeah. it in small ways and seeing does the result change. It's interesting because, yeah. so with my social media, LinkedIn, I've literally, I have near enough posts every single day, maybe I'll do off at the weekend and this yeah. other and I freestyle it, I don't really think about it and I've never ever scheduled, scheduled mm-hmm. a post. And if I'm ill, I kind of still about. Yeah, you do. But I feel like, 
you well, enjoy it. I do enjoy it, but I told myself I don't enjoy it because it isn't. I don't like doing mundane stuff, and to me, it's not mundane because it's not someone telling me to do it. Yeah, yeah. Which is a good thing. So yeah, I'm coming yeah. up with the creative stuff myself. I was about to say it's, it's it is a creative outlet. Yeah. It can be, can't it? But again, if if you're coming at it from the angle which I have done in the past, and I've kind of dropped that now, I'm enjoying it more for yeah. that reason. Yeah. With an agenda, with well, I want to get more followers so I can get more clients. Or yes. That's when it feels mechanical you don't feel like very creative all the ideas and inspiration inspiration don't come naturally do yeah that, you? yeah and it's a case of be careful what you wish for yeah because when you do get the following yeah you automatically start thinking well what? i need to create this content now mm -hmm. i need to expand my horizons and yeah. then others start copying what you're doing in yeah. your industry but also like it's not to forget why people started to follow you in the first I know. place I and know. it is for you and especially like in your case, like just being yourself. I know that's still scary though, because it's. It you, is. You think if someone doesn't like, say if someone doesn't follow me or like me, I always then think. People will not like you. I know, and you said that. About yeah, this before. is so funny, right? I always say, I've put it on my LinkedIn as a post find the friends that will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Yeah. People... And I need to hear some stuff you say. My friend Laura did the same. Yeah. And there's, a, there's not many friends that will do that. Let me put it that way. I'm going to be really blunt with this. There's I friends think you've got friends for different things. Most authentic friends will always be honest with you. Yeah, I want them to. And then more acquaintances and stuff are more likely to be like, you know, yeah. like, it's, all right. it's fine. Yeah. Oh, you did the right thing. Really when good. maybe I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I don't have friends like that. Well, me one. Well, no, I mean, I don't have friends where I wouldn't be honest with oh, them. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, the friends yeah. friends I have are built on, like, to you. yeah, like a very, um, like, meaningful, yes. like, about, like, meaningful connections, yeah. not superficial in any way. I don't really yeah. keep friends like that, and just naturally. Um, but, yeah, like, yeah, you are going to be not liked. And, like I said before, you know, we were talking a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> a lot of the time it's going to be like for a reason that's through no fault of your own it's it's, it's very be, internal you've not reason. done anything wrong you know you haven't like been unkind to anyone or you know said anything awful people will often not like you because you trigger their insecurities or you know you represent that is some so kind of interesting failure in them you so know. interesting like that's why people go oh she's so annoying isn't she like, yeah you see what she's doing and it's like yeah. all right we don't yeah. follow them don't look but if they're with somebody that goes yeah i did see it yeah. if they're with someone like me and you will go well, just don't follow or whatever yeah yeah they're in the wrong circles and they're never going to grow yeah. so what i so when i start before i post social media i had to judge others less yes and yeah. to help me then be able to pose because a lot of times you're scared of what others think. Yeah. And the reason why you're scared of what others think is because you think what others yeah. are doing over shit. Or we project our even... own opinions onto other people. Like, yeah. I fear that people are going to think this of me, so they probably are going to think that of me. Yes. But it's not. It's just not the case. Objectively, and we know this. Yeah. People view us in such a different way often than we view ourselves because yeah. they're so, often so critical of ourselves. It takes. Wow, and we don't like everybody. No, of course not, and that's fine. As long as you're not being like nasty to people, like it's okay to not like someone or not, you know, kind of associate with people because they're not your kind of people. Like mm. it's fine to not like people. You can still be civil and like kind to people. Yeah, that's and it. And not really, and they're not really your kind of person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you won't necessarily just hang out with them. And it's interesting within a business as well. Your culture. <laughs> It's so important. Yeah, oh my God. I've done something really scary. So potentially we're going to be hiring two people. Oh. And I am really shit myself this week. Like, mm. me and Dan, I've been having conversations with Dan and June. So Dan and June work within Future Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm doing now is leaning upon the managers to kind of run it. Yeah. Even more than I've ever done before. So I've been letting go of the doing the doing, but I like the client meetings. Yeah, so yeah. I'm doing what I'm, you know, good at, should yes. we say. yeah. And the scary bit about hiring is getting the right people. It is. And taking that leap. Yeah. Oh, and it's so hard to do that, like in an interview kind of situation, isn't it? Because yeah. it's not, you don't really get to know someone's nature. Unless you can, and then again, even if you have a look at their social media, like you're not 100% sure. But yeah, if you've known someone a while, it's hard to really know what they're like. Yeah. Are they going to fit well with the team? Yeah. Are they going to progress? Are they going to want to progress? Yeah. 
like I say, I'll say in the interviews, I have got high standards mm -hmm. and I'll say how I, I, I've learned to say, so from starting the business five, six years ago, I'm a different person. Yeah. I've adapted to my role and, and have I have to, to be clear on what my role is Yeah, because it's easy for them to assume. Yeah. And then it's like confusing. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I've learned to do that yeah. from feedback and I always ask to try and ask for feedback and stuff. Yeah. So anyone listening in as well with businesses and people, mm -hmm. we, and you've spoke to people through therapy with businesses and oh, whatnot. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, yeah. It's hard. Like the people management element of a business, like especially when it's your business, is probably one of the, or oh, the yes. most hard like yeah. thing yeah. within it. Because you're trying to curate a team that like shares your values and yeah. shares the value of the business and sees the value of things. Yeah. And that really demands like certain type of people that aren't just turning up to work the money I know. but you have really it's for the month that's it yeah. they turn, they're just chasing that more money in that title yeah but you've curated a business that is more likely to attract that kind yeah. of a person obviously yeah. you've had your challenges but yeah. you know your business has been through different seasons but i feel like it yeah. is coming into a really good season yeah do you think so yeah, I've I told think you. So. yeah yeah where like i do wobble yeah of course like especially when there's change and like a lot oh, of uncertainty yeah, yeah. But yeah, I feel like you're in a position now where you're more likely to attract certain types of employee because yeah. you know, yeah, exactly you are that. business. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. And, and the thing is, and this is 20 business people that are in the service industry, they've got clients that are used to certain employees, for example, and that changes. Mm -hmm. Just to reassure you that that's okay if you do swap. Okay, initially clients might not like it, you know, it's like changing a therapist. You know, yeah. while you've been off, they may have had to go to someone else. Yeah, yeah. And they'll mm -hmm. soon come back if they do, you know, yeah. like you yeah. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I also think people will soon forget about you. Yeah. As brutal as that is. Absolutely. And it's like, we, like I say to you all the time, like if clients leave you, they're not the client for you. I know, and, and it, I it say, makes yeah. space for a client that you're going to enjoy working with, yeah. that aligns with your values. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest driver for me, like showing up on social media and just being honest, being myself, is for that reason, so that people can have a look, as I would if I was looking for a therapist or a certain type of service, I'd want to have a look, get yeah. to know what they're like, yeah. am I going to enjoy working with you, or yeah. am I going to like chatting to you if I'm coming to you just for a one-off service? There's no worse than that dread. Yeah, so, yeah, so if clients look at me and go, Ugh, not for me, yeah. amazing yeah. amazing because i really really just want to attract clients who are going to resonate with me yeah we can work well together and collaborate and i'm actually going to be able to help them yeah exactly that something worse than like working in the nhs as a therapist or you know even with some of the insurance work where someone gets put in your diary i have no idea so who just they are. just so you that anyone listening knows what mm -hmm. insurance work means. So like working with insurance companies or yeah. agencies. And they got, refer clients yeah, to you, yeah. Yeah, private healthcare through work. You might be on a scheme where then they put you through an agency. Oh, what, like Vitality or something? Yeah, like exactly or... that, exactly oh, that. And so they will... come to you. Someone can come to you. Yeah, so I'll be on the books of certain insurance companies and certain, mm, certain like referral agencies that take those referrals in bulk. I'm also registered directly with them, so people with certain insurance plans can just pick a therapist who is registered oh, cool. but big corporate schemes often just put you through um to like a general phone line where a bigger service will take your referral and just allocate it to a therapist who is accredited and has been who meets their requirements to be on their books yeah so uh, you know historically and still now really the bulk of my referrals come through that kind of uh, pathway yeah and i always say to people i've been like saying it loads this week so I've got a lot of new clients if at any point like particularly today you feel like perhaps I'm not quite the right therapist for you or you know you're just not like clicking with me please let me know you can be reallocated already they'll like that yeah and or if you don't feel like that I say just get in touch with the office like no worse. hard feelings yeah. especially in therapy you can't see a therapist that you don't really like or who doesn't really get an understanding. You, you. Yeah, and then the treatment. So people say it doesn't work. work. Doesn't work. They I've do. Had, oh my god, I because hate it. I think. the service or the therapist is just trying to fit them into a box and like do like a mechanical kind of protocol with yeah. them that doesn't fit their yeah. individual needs. So, so yeah, that's why I like you know for the private side of things, I want people to pick me because 
they think I can help them. Yeah. Because that's going to be one of that's the biggest the indicators yeah. of whether they're going to find therapy helpful. Yeah. If definitely. you look at me and think, Dave, think she's really got the skills and experience for me, fantastic. And I've had people get in touch with me where they've said, I'd like a therapist with this or that, or this is within my budget. I say, right, okay, let me see if I can. Is that your phone? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking over there. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, let me um, have a look and help you find a therapist that might be able to offer that. And I'm like part of different networks of therapists and things. Yeah. And I'll put things out to the networks or Is that what you're doing colleagues. now? Putting it all out there to say you I'm back. Um, sort of. Yeah. Like I'm open. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. Um so yeah, like I'm always happy to do that because yeah, you know, it's more enjoyable for me if I've got clients that get the same I can really people. help and yeah. you know and work with. And it's it's more beneficial to, to clients as well. If it, like I've had a, another client this week who's come and, and she paid for a full course of therapy out of her own pocket for a therapist that didn't have the skills and experience to be able to treat her problem. No. And it is just heartbreaking because oh, we're so talking bad. about people who are really distressed at times or, mm. you know, struggling with things like trauma. And it's, it, it's really the therapist's responsibility to say, do you know what, actually, I think you'd be better off seeing a therapist that's like EMDR qualified or see, do you know, whatever. EMDR? That's the eye movement therapy for trauma. It's amazing. Really well, what's good. that sort of thing? It sounds really weird. Not the tapping and all this. No, it's not EFT tapping, no. <laughs> it doesn't right. involve um, eye movement or tapping or sound. But that's... What's um, that stuff they do on social media with the tapping like? That's EFT tapping. Oh, are you on about ASMR? Oh, that's it. The sound. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh no, my God, that sounds no. mental. I can't. Prince, Prince Harry actually had EMDR, so it got a little bit more limelight. It's really oh. effective therapy for lots of things, but... I won't talk about it. Here, obviously, take he'll be watching you and shouting him out. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Harry. Thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah, tell us how your session went with that. Thank you very much. It was Jordan that did it, just to throw it out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, I, it's actually something I'm going to talk about in my next Q&A on okay. Instagram. So, Monday, if you want to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, what time do you go on? Oh, seven. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Only half an hour, isn't it? It's yeah. yeah. It's just like as many questions as I get. And it's funny, isn't it? Like, I'm not going to lie, like, trying to get people to ask you a question. Oh, it's... Oh, my God. It is. You get, like, hundreds of people view your story, not, and they'll like it. Yeah. Ask me a fucking question, yeah. please. Yeah, I, I, you can have thousands of followers, and yeah. I know that's so a Steve, my husband. I yeah. I have seen that now. He's got a hundred... Let me actually have a look on High Rocks Workouts on Instagram. I'm going to look right now at what he's got. And I know, he'll do... saw when you reached 100k. Yeah. Amazing. So, he... So we do obviously YouTube and stuff like that. So Hearts yeah. Workouts has got 103,000 followers on That's Instagram. Amazing. So we do a QA, and a and out of the hundreds, of, well, whoever watches his stories, let's say 2,000 do. Yeah, yeah. They don't all watch That's it, do they? amazing though. Yeah. It? And then we have to do a QA. and a I reckon we get about 10. Yeah. So with yours, to get nil I'm is probably honestly, still, I said to still George, good. <laughs> I said to George, right, he launched, obviously we put some stuff out last week and within like 24 hours he had like 30k that like yeah 30k views what? on his first oh reel. yeah 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 right and i said oh, well people everyone loves food don't they, they do. me trying to get a response and engagement to a therapy account yeah is so hard because they're assuming of what therapy is as well because well, it's it? just different not everyone yeah. wants to follow that kind of stuff like not yeah. everyone's into like self-development and stuff like that but everyone loves food do you I know, know what they i do. mean i love oh my and that's God. not to like minimize Talk what he's doing it's bloody amazing but yeah like the difference in industries like yeah. therapy is not exactly like I suppose it is becoming more fashionable, but... You need to think outside the box for your marketing, right? Listen to this. Yeah. So, at the weekend, me and Steve go for, like, an hour run. And yeah. to me, that's easy run now. And yeah. everyone else, when I tell them, they're like, oh, no, you did, like, five, six miles. I'm yeah, like, yeah, that's I literally done. That's nothing. But you've curated that over I've curated it. Right. So don't... Honestly, I wasn't a runner. I remember when you started, you're like, oh, my God, I've started running. <laughs> I hate it. I, I like it now, because I'm used to it. So I did yeah. a reel, and I said... Because we, when we do our zone two training, I hope there's some fitness enthusiasts watching this so they get what I'm saying. 
that it's so slow and boring that yeah. to do a warm up is even more dull. Warming yeah. up is dull for us. So we did a video and I said, let's do a video of us like warming up and then proving the fact that this is our warm up and we're just going to go and not do, finish it because yeah. we're bored already. Yeah. So we filmed it and he was like, what are you doing? Anyway, so there's us. <laughs> I am just showing the video. So you'll have to look on how it's workouts. But the funniest thing is it, it got uh, 66. Oh my God. <laughs> right. And better than some of his life yeah. and some of my things, but some of our other high rock stuff, like yeah. some of the podcasts got a thousand. Yeah. Some of my videos do well, some have had four thousand. Yeah, but yeah. I thought it was bomb because I didn't really know what I was getting going with it. Yeah, but it's yeah, funny, it isn't it? Obviously he's got the following. Yeah. It's funny what people like to see though. They want to see it? a bit of humour. You've always got to bring a bit yeah. of humour into your so anyone Absolutely. that's on social media. Bring out, laugh at yourself and bring out your humorous side because you did some of that before you obviously had baby. Yeah. And taking the mic a little bit yeah, and yeah. stuff. Mm. And you, you need to do it. And, and you're probably better off bringing George and Hallie in it. Oh, somehow. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. But it's crazy. It's thinking about it. It's That's the sticking point. Yeah. And also, again, like it, it's not for everyone. Like some people will want a very professional, polished therapist. Some people... They don't know what they don't know until they see it though. Exactly. And some people don't. Some people want someone that... Because I remember one of my clients um, had seen a psychologist in London and she mm. was like, the way she dresses is intimidating. So the way the therapist dresses? Yeah. Because it was just like, you know, like corporate dress, okay. you know, in a very polished environment. I and hate I know. That. And she did. And she said, my appraisal of it is... It, of it is she's just looking at me and thinking like you're a mess but obviously that's our own stuff however again it just goes to show doesn't it that i mean i only work online now but even when i didn't like just turning up in things like this that are comfortable mm. modeling that it's okay i i love that do you know mm. what i mean because it's like yeah and i think i did post about it like ages and ages ago but you know what i'm wearing isn't a reflection of my skill set as a therapist. I wrote a post about that yesterday. Did you? Actually, How weird. Did you see it? Right, on LinkedIn, so if anyone wants to watch it, by the time this comes out, you might have to go back three weeks, two weeks. Um, I met a lawyer online. Yeah. She works, she used to work for a massive firm yeah. of lawyers, but then has moved to a firm in the East Midlands that's smaller, but she's trying to branch out and whatever yeah. else. So she's obviously been following me for ages because there was a few things she said that because she mm -hmm. relates to. Mm -hmm. Got on the call with her and it was like we've known each other for ages because she's probably knows me. But that's what you want, yeah. here, isn't it? In and she clients. was the same type of person. We talked about yeah. kids and I follow her on Instagram now. Yeah. And I'm more likely to do business with her yeah. because of that. Exactly. Male or female. So I've got a guy that helped um, with my, what do you call it, buyout protection, buyout. You know, the shareholders agreements and this, that, the other. He helped with that and he's come through LinkedIn and yeah. he's more chill to talk to, yeah. wore a hoodie on his call. Yeah. And I just did the business with him because of social media. Yeah, yeah. And getting to know him. That's it, isn't yeah. it? You are, and that's the thing, like, in marketing, people say it all the time, don't they? But you are more likely to buy off someone that you know, like, and trust. Yeah. So that's really what the aim should be. And that is going to look very different for each person. Like, yeah. what they like and yeah. who they trust might look very different each individual so it's just about being comfortable and confident that whatever you've got to offer that is going to be for someone I know. so trying to get your content in front of those people is the yeah. challenge isn't it well the challenge for me now so i again did a post and stories and this is genuinely true and i can't once upon a time i wouldn't have dared shared this on a story but yeah. i bought a journal or gratitude journal don't say it like i know it cringes me out that i mean doing it because steve bought me a journal and did yeah. but then i was thinking god i never when I brought you it, but that's good for telling other people to it do is, stuff. It is because yeah. I know probably deep down, yeah, that I should be doing things like that. Just try it out because, yeah. because I've heard such good positive things about it. Yeah, and that's the thing. it's about trying something. I'm trying without it. prejudgment. I know, <laughs> I know. Being real here, Just giving it a good go. I'm giving it a good go. So basically, it's a six minute diary yeah. a day, and then you write your morning pointers mm -hmm. of affirmations and what you're grateful for, and then yeah. an evening summary, which yeah. is. So I did it, started it last night, and I yeah. did it this morning. So let's see, and there's lots to read in it as yeah. well. Yeah, I in. feel like gratitude journals are, again, they're fashionable, right? They've become fashionable, and so people talk about them a lot, and so people roll, roll their eyes. Gratitude journal. 
In CBT, we call them like positive data logs, right? And there's a science behind the use of them. And I feel yeah. like this gets missed out, yeah. yeah. And it's all about, again, it's, it's to do with like reframing your mindset and stuff like that. And it's about rewiring your brain to a more kind of like neutral or positive thinking bias. So just to give an example, say, let's talk about, right, how hard criticism hits, yeah? Mm. Someone criticises you, mm. it hits hard, doesn't it? You remember it, you yeah. amplify it. If yeah. you get a compliment, it's like... Oh, oh, that's very really nice. Oh, Move thank on. you. Yeah. Oh, Look at saying the... that to be nice. Yeah. Like, yeah. You don't mean it. Yeah, exactly. So, positive data logs or gratitude journals, they, they work in a number of ways. But, like, first of all, it's helping to program your brain to automatically look for things that are going well or things that you're doing well yeah. or, you know, the people you've got around you, whatever it is, things that you could genuinely be grateful for, even when, like, there's shit, like, hits shit the is hitting the fan. Do you know what I mean? Because there's always stuff. And I always say to my clients, like, especially like depressed clients, if you can't think of anything, you need to think smaller. Like in the context of your life, how things are now, who you've got around you, who you haven't, whatever. And it might be a case of like, you know, and from a clinical level, it might be things like, actually, I'm, I managed to get dressed today. Yeah. Like, and for me, that that I can't do that. But I get what yeah, you're saying. But for you, it yeah. might be something like. For example, like, um, had a really positive message today from someone on LinkedIn. They said that my content helped yeah, them. Um, yeah, I get, do get them as well. They're so just... it, it helps you. It helps your brain, rather than dismissing it, to be like, that was really nice. Mm. And actually, I'm, I'm proud of that. To sit with I that. I do do that was really nice. And I've done it where yeah. I screenshotted it and shared it on my story to say, this has made my day. Yeah, yeah. So, so give a bit of background. I've obviously grown my business quite quickly. I've had to deal with lots of different things. I've grown and developed on public speaking. Um, what else have I done? Fitness competitions, a lot of training wise. Just lots of highs and lows. And the reason why I've come to this sticking point, so I'm quite a positive person. I always think in the future. Yeah. And building what we're doing next, what we're doing next. Yeah. I got married three months ago and I said to Steve a week later, Right, so when we, we're going to renew our vows and we're going to renew them. Oh my them on God. The, yeah, I did. Fran. I was like half joking, mm. like laughing about it, yeah. but half being so serious. Yeah. I was thinking, well, yeah, I do want to actually do it at 50. That's not a bad shout. So I, I, caught, I catch myself doing it. Yeah. I'm never present. Yeah. I used to be before the business. Yeah, yeah. I must have been. Yeah. Because I'm, I was, I'm on such a mission. Yeah. So I'm never present because I'm always thinking about the next thing. What do I need to do next? I need to do that. You I have to, to do. I need sit to do that. and admire like what you've achieved. No, I you've got to. And it's making me a little bit unhappy. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed a change yeah. in me because I've had some shit go on. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I've had to declutter in certain things. Yeah. Um, and I have been a little bit more unhappy and yeah. not sharing as much as I used to on social media, not getting that buzz I used to. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that's the issue? Well, you, again, you've or got... some of it. What? The whole, I've brought in some negative mindsets that Steve's noticed as well. Probably, yeah. And it's reactive to events, isn't it? Like mm. negative events. Post like you say. <laughs> no. <laughs> no I hate that term. I hate that term. But it's, well, yeah. people say it's a thing, so it yeah. probably is. But. Yeah, yeah. You, it's reactive to difficult circumstances and that have kind of like knocked you a bit. Mm. But like you're doing the helpful thing in thinking, right, okay, how can I try and you know, like, turn this around, like, acknowledge that I have got so much to still be, like, excited about, grateful for, proud of. You have to acknowledge that stuff. It's like, well, even when you're talking about it, this is genuinely true, and I don't know if anyone else can relate, I still struggle to take that in. I know, and I think it's really It's going to take time, because I, I feel like I don't want to stop, I don't want to do that in case it stops me from doing other things. That's why you've got to try it, though, because sometimes that's what propels you further forward, that you yeah, can go, to... oh, my God, I've done so well. What I'm capable can I do? of, like, so reaching minute, my other dreams like I'm not and goals. Of more. Right, well, there you go. So that's so exactly I know something's why happening. you need to have a look at. Yeah. Well, I've achieved this so far yeah. and pick it apart on a micro level like I'm still training like you know I've got a really good Which attitude yeah. like if I rest things aren't going to fall apart do you know what I, I mean know, and that's, that's so important to know as well yeah. like I caught myself yesterday um, because again like I'm struggling to accept that I have less capacity 
than what I used to have in business. Like I cannot yeah. respond to emails immediately. I yeah. can't be on my phone all the time checking if I've had a response from the client that was going to get back to me about the appointment they wanted. Yeah. And I had a missed call yesterday. I have to work in Boston on Wednesday for childcare reasons. Yeah. So I'd come home and I just turned my phone on um, just before I was going to bed and I'd had a voicemail from a potential client. And I was like, oh my God, well, I haven't got time in the morning to get back to it because I'm here. Mm. And then I've, I've got a baby group, like, yeah, right after this class. Yeah. So I'm not going to be able to get back to it till lunchtime. And I was like, oh no, oh I my don't. God, it's taking too long. And then I was just like, right, you need to get a grip of yourself. If a potential client cannot wait for you to respond to them at the earliest opportunity you can, like, we're not talking about a week or two weeks here, then they're not the client for you. Like, and again, when I pick up the phone, I'll say like, you know, really sorry. Um, yeah, I've you know got a young family, but this you don't even have to say anything. I don't. You don't, and it's just a case of like, I'm not accessible twenty four hours a day. Whereas I'm near enough found. But you shouldn't be. <laughs> it's boundaries. I'm learning my boundaries. Because it's good for you and it's yeah. good for the clients. Because if you learn that you don't need to be on twenty four seven. You're going to be able to take like real time out that's actually gonna like rejuvenate you and fill your cup back up without thinking, oh my god, if I don't check my emails, my business is gonna fall apart. And that's what I had to coach myself through again. Yeah, and the biggest thing I'm doing now is uh, letting go and obviously passing it on to the managers. Yeah. And literally, they've yeah. even said between. And the thing is with sharing, so this is for anybody that's building a business, you have to share yeah. your vision where you want to be. So mm -hmm. they go, yeah, we can do that, we can do that. They can do more than you think and allow them to believe. Absolutely. If you keep saving the day or coming in and checking yeah. on them. And some people are better at you at certain things. They're all better That's than why me. That's why you need a team. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I remember Claudia starting with us at the beginning, near enough, mm -hmm. probably six months in. Yeah. That's my sister, by the way. And um, I remember saying to her within a year, I said, you're gonna be, you'll be better at me bookkeeping and accounts yeah. Yeah. than I'll ever have been because mm -hmm. you're really, you know, the way she was going at it as well. And lo and behold, roll forward five years, she is brilliant, even yeah. though she's got some confidence issues, but haven't we all? Yeah, um, shock. Yeah, exactly yeah. that, yeah. And I want to help our team mm -hmm. progress to where they need to get to yeah. with my encouragement yeah. instead of saving them all the time and going, 100%. oh, sorry, it's I'll do helpful. that for you, pass it in, you're all right. Yeah, it's not helpful It's not to helpful. Do that. Please, if you're listening and you're an employer as well, just don't do that for your team. Yeah. Yeah. Checking in and being that, like, trying to like, save them so they all have to come to you because you feel good that they yeah. come to or you. Or micromanaging. Yeah, everyone, that's everyone cringe. Everyone hates a micromanager. Like, yeah. I had some in yeah, the, in the past. World, and it's just suffocating. Like, it makes you feel not good enough as well. It does. Like, well, I'm just shit at my job. Yeah, they're just yeah. coming in saving Why my day. Why are checking in on me? Like, yeah. 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 So true. Mm. And that is a really another subject we'll, we'll carry more on that. Yeah. And I will feed back the two employees' potential. They might say no, they, it might not suit them because we're like pushing different things and trying different things, different hours. Yeah. We're very flexible anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll talk about more of that next week. Um, mm. And what else have you got on for today then, just to finish up? So you're going to your baby class. Yeah, I'm going to my baby class. It's then you're ringing that lady. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, then I'm going to ring um, the client back. Yeah. The client so back. tell us next week if you've got her. I will, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is good for accountability. Uh, and then I don't know about, this afternoon we've got some like free space that I'm really tempted to fill with like work bits, but I probably won't. Because... Create a bit of content with the family then. Yeah, What yeah. was the challenge I gave you last week? I can't even remember. We what was talk. it? Did I give you one? Or maybe I had my head I was telling myself to. I'll ask I'll ask Abby to look. We'll do that. Yeah. And we'll get yeah. I'll get Abby to write stuff down. Yeah, I've got a piece of content ready to post tomorrow. Yeah. Real. I'm gonna ask for questions on LinkedIn at some point as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I'll do that because yeah. I think that's interesting. And it helps yeah. us. We, we we honestly, anyone listening to this, we actually talk like this with our All coffins. The this is why we're deep talking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like to find out, so I'm like helping you in different ways yeah, to the yeah. traditional norm and you're helping me in different ways to yeah, the traditional norm exactly. that I'm used to, yeah. um, which I think is pretty cool, especially for professionals yeah. that deep down aren't, they're really informal, but they've yeah. acted in a certain way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So no, that would be good to get some questions. Yes. And we can have like both of our takes on it as well, because sometimes yeah. we have like different... Oh different my God, different different things, well, and we'll be honest about it. And you always say to me, no, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. 
I'll do yeah. it, I'm going to do it. And then you'll yeah. be like, Fran, why do you always have to do it? Yeah. So it's a good thing, it's the yeah. balance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right, so we've yeah. had our drinks. Yeah, another so Liberties. Good. Liberties, okay. Liberties coffee. And Love thanks it. for listening in. And we will see you, hear you, or hear us next week. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs>